as a sewing engineer, there are many things that I wish I had known earlier in my career. These are many lessons that I've learned through my own experience along the way. In this video, I've chosen four important lessons that have taught me to be a better professional, which I hope can help you on your own journey. Whether you are just starting out in your career or you are a few years into sewing development, as I believe there is always something new to learn and improve upon. So without further delay, here are some things that I wish I knew as a sewing engineer. The technology that you study, the most up-to-date one or the one you like, might not be the technology you will end up working with. Don't avoid studying the previous version of a technology only because it isn't the most up-to-date. When you join a company, even if the company has plans to migrate to a newer technology, there might be some projects where they will keep using older technology you are less familiar with or less interested in. I've been in that situation where I would really push for a great into a new version or new technology, but the reality is that you cannot just change the stack or refuse to work on that project. You could quit, but then you wouldn't learn my next point. You are learning even when you think you are not. This was a lesson that I learned in some of the projects I worked on. As I was saying earlier, in your career, you will join a project that uses a technology you think is a bit out of date. And this is quite likely because technology evolves super fast. In these cases, you might feel like you are moving backwards in your career as you see yourself having to write legacy code or in an outdated way. Nevertheless, every time I've been in this situation, now that I can look back, it amazes me how much I improved on other skills. Being a software engineer is not only coding, or not even only solving programming problems. There is so much more that goes into that. It's important to learn about the business you're working on, learn about the customers, how to handle the communication between different teams, how to collaborate and work more efficiently with your team, how to communicate with them and share knowledge. It's a combination of technical skills and not technical skills. The non-challenging tech stack will allow you to focus on other areas and developing other skills. No matter what, there is always going to be a skill or knowledge you will gain in this time, apart from, of course, improving your technical and coding skills. This lines up really well with my next two points. Prioritize learning to solve problems rather than mastering a technology. Times moves on and with that, so does the technology. React has changed so much since its beginnings. Next.js has also just upgraded to a new version making big changes in the way it works. Even JavaScript has changed in the last 10 years. But there are some concepts that will remain the same and some skills that we will always need to work on besides the technology we are using. Like critical thinking and problem solving. As software engineers, we are constantly facing complex problems and it's important to develop skills to be able to approach problems in a more logical thinking way. We need to identify the root cause of problems, learn to break them down into smaller chunks, analyze all the information about it, make deductions and implement efficient and effective solutions. It is true that we might need to learn a new syntax or a new way of working with a specific framework. But if you get good at identifying patterns, training your brain to think in a systematic way, you're going to be able to apply this to complex projects, but also small bugs, and transfer this knowledge to any tech. Prioritize learning deeply the language and the aspects of the development you are doing rather than mastering a framework or a library. This will provide a solid foundation for the software development you do and it will enable you to be more flexible and adaptable as you continue to learn and grow as a developer. The core of web development still remains the same. There are new methods, libraries or plugins that abstract some logic for us. But for example, we will always have to create a secure and safe website independently of the technology we use to achieve that. It's also important to optimize our app and learn to read the core web vital scores, for example, or understand basic concepts of SEO. When you are starting out and you are still a bit unsure of the roadmap of text you would like to pursue, it can be tempting to jump into learning as many libraries, frameworks and tech as possible, or focusing too much into mastering one. So something I wish I knew six years ago is how important it is to build a strong foundation in the languages and concepts that you are mainly going to work with. When we learn a new framework like Next.js, 
we are building on top of the knowledge that we have of the underlying language. In this case, Next.js is built on top of React, which is a library, and React on top of JavaScript, which is the language. If you have a strong foundation in that language, you will become more versatile and be able to easily pick up a new technology and migrate to new versions of a library. Lately, I'm observing how common has become for beginners to land a job where they work with React or use TypeScript but don't have much knowledge about JavaScript. Or they are confused about what are just native JavaScript methods versus what are React features. And I'm not judging here, whatever works for you. But I advise you to dedicate time to understanding JavaScript first or at least parallel because the industry is constantly evolving. Libraries and frameworks are going to be introduced all the time and will evolve a lot faster than a language. You cannot rely only on your abilities to build websites using these frameworks and on libraries like React, Angular, Next.js, Gatsby, or so on. It's not sufficient to build apps mechanically just because you know the syntax, but also understand the reasoning and significance behind them. Trust me, I personally experienced the pitfalls of not fully comprehending the concepts and principles at play. So make sure to not fall into the trap of believing you understand something just because you can't do it. Just because you know how to do it. If you want to learn more from my mistakes and speed up the process of becoming a successful software engineer and grow as a person, here are a few tips that will help you on your journey. Thank you for watching.